Colin, the evolution of the solo percussionist and along with it, the repertoire, the instruments has been extraordinary over the last couple of decades. What do you think in your experience triggered that big change? I mean, when I was growing up, there were solo players like Yamashita and, uh, and then of course Evelyn Glenny came along, but there's really been this huge explosion in, in, in your field. What do you think, why do you think that began to happen? Well, I think the, the time has been right. Um, there have been a number of elements um, at play here and um, important things coming together. So it's a, been a collaborative thing, I think, between players and composers. And they've each helped each other and driven each other onto better things, I think. And um, certainly, I think there have been breakthrough pieces in the repertoire in the mm. past couple of decades, as you say, um, as a time frame, and it's an extremely exciting time for mm. percussion in general. Mm. What, when did you first begin hitting things? Uh, I mean, and, and, and who made the difference to you in those formative years? I mean, who, who inspired you, or what music inspired you at the beginning? I had a very instinctive reaction to um, rhythm in general um, as a young boy, and uh, I started playing the drum kit at a very early age. And I wanted to be a pop musician, and then I was interested in jazz. I played in a couple of big bands growing up at high school, etc. But when I found out about the orchestra, and especially 20th century music, and the power that had been unleashed um, by hmm. the key composers from that time, Stravinsky and Bartok, uh, um, and then on to the reactionary composers post-Second World War, Boulez, Stockhausen, these were all very, very um, important people for me and kind of set my imagination racing. Mm. And of course they all used <laughs> a lot of percussion um, and I think I just became very, very interested in new music and I became aware that percussion was having a more important role and at times, at times um, as a soloist and this kind of gave me the idea that this was a role that was ripe for development. an interesting word back there about instinctive because it is about that isn't it it's about you know the sensitivity of touch as well as instinctive feeling for how rhythm works and uh, you can't be taught it it's just it's something that's either there or isn't yeah I think um, percussionists are typically creatures who have inquiring minds mm -hmm. and the nature of the instrument as well it is a very hands-on instrument so I think any percussionists first mumblings will be improvisatory uh, because you can get started very quickly and easily on the drums or anyone can be given a hand drum and get a sound out of it for example um, so I think we all have a an improvisatory instinct and also one in which gets us very close to our instruments very quickly because to make the sound of most of these instruments is actually quite straightforward to get going. Maybe that's and, why I dabbled in the past. Yeah oh well good. good <laughs> it know. was that you know it, it was that Immediacy. It was that yeah. you know ability to be part of a group of musicians very quickly that made me digress away from the piano and violin and the things that I was learning mm. at the time. I think it's also why percussionists are good um, team players. Typically, I mean, I now have got to know various parts and nationalities of the percussion community, and what I tend to notice is always the same: is that it is it is a, a fraternity, it is a big team, and something that we're all rather proud that now is our time and so many fantastic opportunities. What's the conversation like among the fraternity? I've, <laughs> I've, I'm a bit out of touch with it, but uh, um, what do you tend to talk about when you guys get together? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's I a mean, very loaded question. Right? Yes, there's lots of fun to be had there. For example, um, recently I've been involved in um, the inaugural percussion seminar that's been set up in the States at Chosen Vale, New Hampshire. And uh, I've actually established a, a scholarship there in my name because I was very taken with this idea of a percussion community there. And largely this is for youngsters in their 20s, and they are of a spectacular level. Uh, I was very wow. impressed indeed by the standard there, yeah. and also the conviviality of them, and they put on this fantastic chamber concert, which I helped to 
coach and I participated in as well. Mm. And uh, it was just a very, very good spirit, very positive, anything's possible kind of attitude. Mm. And um, I think that's, that's kind of where we're at as, as a group now as percussionists. In 2005, Colin, you received a Boletti Butoni Award, and um, it's an institution that's truly opened the debate: is talent enough? Mm. Because it, it, you know, it, it seeks out and helps develop musicians who have conspicuous talent. Um, but it's not just a financial reward; it, it comes with a lot of goodwill and mentoring and support. And now, how valuable has it been for you? And can you give us specifics about? how it's worked in your case. Yes, well, I think they have been um, fantastically important for a number of people, myself included. It just helps you to maybe finish certain projects that you've started or achieve things that you would like to, but perhaps didn't have the funds for at all. Mm. So their commissioning has been key. I had a a couple of pieces co-commissioned with them. Um, One concerto by Simon Holt, which is uh, one of my very finest pieces. Table of Noises. A Table of Noises. And then um, we also got some more repertoire from my duo with Hawken Hardenberger, which didn't really have any repertoire, so it was key in launching that as well. And then they gave me all kinds of assistance with publicity, PR things, which I... For some reason, not thought was so important or well, not, that's not an area. looked into. Yes, that's an area that musicians often need help with, and it's a very valuable area. I think um, musicians do well to outsource that side of things because my own personal time is not best spent trying to promote myself um, because my time is best spent practicing mm. and doing what I do. And I personally did need help in getting myself together Mm. and into the right places and in the right media for allowing my work to be more visible. How much of your time do you spend developing potential commissions? Or do they tend to come to you now? Well, I would say, almost without exception, the pieces that I have premiered have been initially my idea to approach these composers. And then, of course, it's been very much their business to write the pieces, so I'm not making any kind of claim on these on these works. To what extent uh, are the commissions collaborative? Do you like it? Or do you prefer it if they are collaborative? So, in other words, you working with the composer to, to kind of um, develop their ideas for percussion? Because mm-hmm. not all composers have a good sense of what percussion can do. Some do, some don't. Yes, well, there's been as many different reactions to the percussion concerto question as there have been composers involved (laughs) and also as many different uh, needs um, attended to by myself. Some composers want to be left alone and I I kind of encourage that and let them do their worst if you like and then if necessary we do some editing. Other people need things like rhythmic training and help with counterpoints and I'm very happy with that too. You mentioned Simon Holt just now and Table of Noises. What I loved about this piece, and it's actually had legs, I mean, you've you've been performing it quite a lot, and I know you're very fond of it, but um, I love the way it confounded our expectations in so many respects as to what we generally expect a percussion concerto to be. And uh, certainly when I heard it first, that opening, I would never in a million years have heard a duet between a piccolo and a woodblock as being a potential start for something, but it's just a, a great idea to kick the piece off. That's the piece that I joyfully refer to as the the anti-percussion concerto. And I think it's a piece that um, works beautifully as such, and it's incredibly subtle. And it is as explosive 
as it is lyrical, um, and it's exuberant as it is shy. And it, it seems to be all things often at once. Above anything else, the music is so strong that it sort of doesn't really require adjectives and an identity, and in some ways is over and above all, all such things. Mm. What are the pieces that that you're most proud of having originated, Colin? And 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 which are the most satisfying to perform? I guess I mean you've mentioned Simon Holt's Table of Noises and eloquently described why that works for you. But all percussion pieces work in different ways. So which have really tweaked to your imagination and your technique? Well, I think um, the one thing that springs to mind straight away is my relationship with uh, the British composer Dave Marrick. Um, who's someone I was in a band with when I was a teenager, the Steve Martland band, a British, oh, yeah. very well known, and he had this excellent and very <laughs> diversely populated band, which is a collection of very interesting musicians. Dave was the pianist when I joined the band, and um, I was very intrigued by his talents. And then I found out that he was writing some music sometime later, um, and then in, in 2000 I commissioned him to write a piece uh, for myself and this was as it turned out the first of more than 150 performances later wow. first of about 10 or so premieres that I've given of his and he really has got to know my playing and pushed my technical resources in a certain direction and it's been a marvellous experience to well, he's, he's also the collaborator on your new album Borrowed Time isn't he? Yes and that album is, is still my calling card if I have a musical calling card it would have to be that album with Dave, the beautiful thing has been to see his music in a number of different forums. So he's written pieces for me as a duo partner to um, trumpet, organ, piano, double percussion piece, chamber music, so I work with um, solo percussion with string quartet. And then finally, the dream happened this summer when he wrote me a chamber concerto, which I premiered with the Lapland Chamber Orchestra, uh, which is a lineup of strings and wind quintet. Yeah, he just keeps developing and keeps changing his approach to percussion, and it's something that feels very, very under my skin now. Among the, the bigger scale orchestral pieces that obviously, um, you know, um, one thinks of the Jennifer Higdon Concerto or the, um, the Ahu Concerto. Do these get performed a lot for you? Yes, they do. I was compiling some figures recently for something and I worked out that since the premiere of the Higdon Concerto in December 2005, I've played that work on average once a month for every month since the premiere. That's amazing. Um, for a contemporary piece or yes. you know, a new piece, that's amazing. So it's extraordinary. Of course, some performances are very bunched together, so I might have a run of six or seven, but uh, that's the, <laughs> the average. Percussion is very, very sexy for, for the public and for young audiences particularly gravitate towards it. It's that immediacy, I think. The logistical practicalities of being a percussionist, like getting the kit around, how do you solve that? Do you do it all yourself? Do you have a roadie? How does it work? Um, and even the logistics of practicing at home and having a soundproof room, how does all that work for you? Yes, well, <laughs> we try to make it as easy as possible for everyone involved and although on one occasion for a concert in would you believe of all places Beirut oh. um, where I did take all my equipment uh, for a recital in flight cases um, and that situation was just so stressful and difficult and expensive and just terrible so apart from that one situation which basically made me realize well okay we're not doing that again what I do is I rent large equipment wherever it is like I'm playing okay 